morning, everyone, and welcome to our antenatal class with Sister Ingrid Kronewald, who will be speaking to us about the difference between colic and when, um, the symptoms, and then when you should seek for treatment. Good morning, Sister. Good morning, and I'm very happy to be with you here today, and this is a topic that often comes up. I see this a lot in the baby clinics and get phone calls. People really worry, especially with it's, you know, if it's your first baby and you don't know what the difference is, you know, what is colic, what is wind, what should you do? Um, because one actually feels sometimes quite, what's the word, you know, that you that you don't know what to do with your baby if your baby's upset and is crying and you don't really know what to do and where to seek help. So this is a really important topic um, for those of you who are still pregnant and preparing to become a mommy or you already have a baby and you perhaps in the situation that you don't really know exactly what's going on. So first of all, if we think about the difference, it, it's sometimes very confusing because one would think, um, you know, wins as well as colic, it overlaps a bit and that sometimes makes it more confusing as to what is what. But let's start with wins. Wins is quite common. And there's a, there's a popular belief to say that wins are swallowed, you know, that if your baby's feeding and if you're breastfeeding or when you are formula feeding that your baby, that the wins are actually going to somehow get into the baby. It can be by a bottle or then with breastfeeding, um, you know, it sometimes doesn't even make sense. How exactly does this work? You know, but I'm going to tell you today that most wins actually that form in the tummy um, or that are in the tummy are actually formed at the time of a feed, you know, with the absorption of the, of the milk that is in the tummy. And it's not always just the wind that somehow gets from point A to point B. So it's not, you know, that the baby's feeding and then somehow there's a wind going through. It can happen. That is one of the things that sometimes does happen. But the majority of winds are actually that the baby actually also feels is when there's, when there's milk in the tummy and that absorption that takes place in the tummy, that actually causes a gas release and then suddenly there's a wind that is in the tummy that wasn't there before. And if we think about a newborn, specifically newborn babies, you know, it is a very new thing for a baby to actually experience this. Now, if you think about it in pregnancy, babies don't get food like that. They get all their nutrients and so on. They get through the umbilical cord. So once a baby is born and a baby starts to feed and there's milk going into the tummy, that is a quite a new thing for the baby to actually experience. And a lot of babies do actually tend to be a little bit upset or a little bit uncomfortable with, with that. That is why... For, for babies, for newborns, when you're feeding your baby, it is always advised to actually wind your baby after every feed. And this is, and this is my baby, Erica. So I just want to, again, um, just tell you, you know, that once your baby, when you just fed your baby, you have to always wind your baby and you can do this by, you know, there are so many different ways by holding your baby or by um, putting your baby over your shoulder, but you have to try to actually release the wind that is in the tummy. It is, however, also important that babies can actually wind, sometimes even themselves. You know, you pick up the baby and then suddenly the, um, you know, the wind jumps out, you know, so it's a very easy wind. But sometimes winds go downhill, you know, so if we can say, you know, the farting actually happens quite frequently as well. And it's, if you already have your baby, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's unbelievable that this little person that's just this size can actually produce those sounds. So farting happens a lot, and that is also a way for the baby to release gas. Okay, so lots of winds, it can actually either go up or it can go down, but it is important to try to wind your baby. For the, so for the first few months, um, definitely after every feed, you have to wind the baby. You can, for some, this is also where you're going to start noticing um, your baby's cues. 
Um, for some, it might be a good idea to even say, well, during a feed at some point, take your baby off and then win the baby and then latch the baby again. And this is where, you know, you will become the expert on your baby as to what works for you. Okay, so for wending, that is a very common thing, very most, but I would actually say that most babies do struggle a little bit with that. Um, but it is something that over time passes and then later on you won't even need to win the baby. If you think about yourself, you nobody's winning you. You know, you've learned how to cope with this. But um, for, for a small newborn baby, that is something that your baby needs to help, you know, your baby needs help with, with the winding. Okay, so that is with winds. The difference here between winds and, and, um, and colic is that colic is a little bit more in an extreme form. That is more severe and it's often a fluctuating pain in the abdomen of the, of the baby. And it can actually cause a lot of um, discomfort, obviously, for baby. Your baby becomes very unhappy and it causes a lot of stress for, for new parents. Um, you know, and it's, it's perhaps also that your baby can't talk, you know, to you, you don't understand, you have to like figure out exactly what's going on. And your baby's telling you by crying and screaming, your baby's telling you, I'm really upset and I'm really uncomfortable. Okay, so that is your communication with your baby or your baby's communication with you. Okay, so the big thing here with colic is that the cause of colic is actually even up to this point. Um, in the day, you know, in the modern times that we actually not quite hundred percent sure what is the reason for this. There are some um, ideas and first of all, it is, it might definitely be the immature gut. And this is what I said earlier, that your baby's tummy, um, you know, it's so new for all this food, for all this, you know, the, the milk that goes in, the absorption that takes place, the winds are being formed. That all is a new process for your baby. And it takes a while for the baby to actually get that gut, you know, matured. So it takes a few weeks, a few months. Sometimes it, it's very different from baby to baby. But baby actually needs time just to mature properly. Okay. So we think that is a potential reason why some babies develop colic. And then also another reason is food allergies. That might also be something um, to look at. Um, and then obviously any kind of trapped winds that do not come out that are just causing a lot of discomfort for baby and it just becomes worse and worse. That is also another reason why your baby might um, have colic. So now if we look at the signs of colic, how do you know if your baby has colic? The first thing to keep in mind is the three threes. Okay, so what we mean with that is it's for three hours a day. Your baby is screaming and crying and really upset with you for three hours a day, for three days in one week, and for three consecutive weeks. If that is exactly what's happening to you at this point, then it's very likely that your baby actually has colic. Okay, so it's the three threes. And then the next thing is that your baby is very restless. Your baby is really uncomfortable. You can just see your baby's uncomfortable. Your baby might be actually drawing the little knees and the legs up and then really even like um, moving backwards. And at the same time, when, when he is um, crying and screaming, becomes like really red in the face. And that is um, another sign that your baby is also telling you, I'm really upset. I'm really uncomfortable. Most of these babies, however, actually at nighttime, when they sleep, they sleep okay, which is a great thing, you know. <laughs> you have your hands full in the day with the colicky baby, if that is the case, but at least at nighttime you get some sleep when your baby is sleeping. Okay, so in most cases that is the, you know, what actually happens. So now what can you do if you do have a baby that's really upset, that is really uncomfortable, that is crying a lot and you convinced your baby has colic? What can you do? 
Now, there are so many th different things that you can even try, you know, med medication-wise and so on, but we've actually found that medication, it's more little things, it's something that is outgrown, but it's not always that medication does the trick. So little tips here that you can try perhaps at home with your baby is to always, after every feed, wind your baby. And if you think it's the wind that's causing this crampiness and this uncomfortable feeling in the tummy, perhaps it is a good idea to try to wind your baby more frequently during the feed. And this might be where you take your baby off and you wind your baby and you put your baby on again. So you feed, you wind not just after feed, but you actually also wind during the every, after every few minutes or whenever, you know, during a feed or before you switch over, you wind and then you, you know, you feed again and then you wind again. So lots and lots of feeds just to try to keep the winds um, coming up that nothing is actually trapped. Okay. It also helps to have baby snuggled and comfortable. And this is where baby wearing becomes a lifesaver. If you don't have any kind of thing that you can put your baby in against you, like a wrap or a sling. And I know many people actually have just a long piece of cloth and they just put baby on their chest like this. And then they have like something that actually goes over the baby and keeps the baby in place and you can actually walk around. So that is like a baby wrap. Um, and I know lots of people actually even wear baby on their, on their back. Same thing, it is called baby wearing. And we have found that babies actually do a lot better if a baby is against you, held upright. That is perhaps another thing to just keep in mind. Babies, if they are more in an upright position, they actually feel a little bit better. And then also against you with the baby rearing, it makes it it makes baby um, much much more relaxed. So definitely is a good thing to um, to try. You're not spoiling your baby. You're looking after your baby's needs. Okay, so if if this is your help, if this is something that is working for you, you do that, okay? And then also another thing that you can try is to swaddle your baby. And this is what I mean with that. It is by wrapping your baby tightly in a, in a, um, in a blanket. And this is where especially the shoulders and the, and the tummy area is quite tight. So the little arms are, um, you know, against the body and you actually wrap your baby um, you know, quite tight, and that is a swaddle. I would just keep the legs a little bit loose so that the legs can actually move. Okay, so that is just um, important. And then also, like I said, you know, the upright position is something that actually works quite well. And also with the feeds, directly after feed, if you can try to keep your baby more upright in that, you know, for those babies, compared to putting baby straight down to lie down flat, um, it, is, it is seen that babies actually do better and then they feel more comfortable when they are actually more in an upright position. And if I can just explain it to you as well, that if you think about, um, if you think about the stomach, Okay, if this is the stomach, or let me do it like this, if this is the stomach and there's milk coming in the stomach, if your baby is in an upright position, the milk that goes in goes and collects at the bottom end of the stomach, okay? So there's less pressure at the top, okay? So, and causes less of a discomfortable, you know, discomfort feeling of baby. If your baby immediately is putting, you know, being put flat down, the milk basically goes and it runs um, to all sides of the stomach and it even pushes up at the top part of the stomach. And that can cause even a little bit of heartburn for babies sometimes. So it is, and then obviously we know that is not comfortable. If you think about yourself, you know, if you have heartburn, it's not a great feeling. Um, so it is something to keep in mind to always keep baby more in an upright position that might help um, to you know the baby and then also we know heat helps so you can do that with a warm bath so by at any point if your baby's crying a lot and is really uncomfortable just um, make a bath for your baby and then put your baby in the bath and this is not for washing specifically it is by being 
submerged into warm water and you can even bath with your baby okay so if you get into a big bath that is also quite a soothing and relaxing thing for your baby otherwise you can just take a bean bag if you have a bean bag if you don't have one you can easily make one by taking an old sock and just by putting rice or corn or something in make a knot and there you go you've got a bean bag and you can take this, put it in the microwave, heat it up, and then you can also just put that on the tummy. That is also that heat, and then also the, the pressure of it actually helps a lot for soothing, you know, um, an, an uncomfortable tummy. Okay, just make sure that it's not too hot. Always test it on yourself. You don't want to burn your baby. Okay, then also gentle massage on the tummy is quite important. Just remember to clockwise in the clockwise direction, and you can really slow and just really by pressing down on the tummy that also helps a lot for that um, movement helps and this is again when I spoke about wearing your baby helps um, you know to to soothe your baby but also any kind of movement by putting your baby in a pram and then perhaps by going for a walk might actually do the trick as well um, fresh air some sunlight can never do harm okay so that is really a good thing and then the last thing that I would mention here as well is music remember that your and even your voice you can sing to your baby your baby knows you your voice knows you but then also any kind of music that you enjoy any kind of relaxing music you can play and that might also just do the trick for your baby at any point by thinking when is it best to try to uh, to perhaps reach out to a healthcare provider if it's your clinic sister or if it is um, your doctor, your GP pediatrician, or whoever is your person that you can go to afterwards, is that if your baby um, is vomiting bile, and I would explain that perhaps to say, if your baby's vomiting some really green stuff, okay, normally milk is white, but if it is green, you know, that your baby's vomiting a lot of green stuff that comes out, that is a sign to say, okay, now I need to go see my doctor or my healthcare provider. Also, if your baby is starting to have bloody stools, that is another thing that I would say perhaps it's best to have baby checked out. And then at any point, if your baby has a temperature, so this is where your thermometer comes in quite handy, but we also know, you will know when your baby has a temperature because just with all this kissing and cuddling of your baby, you know exactly what your baby feels like. So at any point, if your baby feels hotter, or warmer then you can just do the temperature and if you see your baby has a temperature then perhaps it's a good idea to have baby checked out or at any point if you feel you are not coping anymore okay if it becomes really difficult to cope then it's important to know that you must reach out okay so those are really the two things about you know between colic and wind very much overlaps a bit but the colic is in a way more severe form winds are um, quite normal it just takes um, just a few weeks sometimes a few months but it's actually quite easy for the baby to get out um, and it's not really a big problem okay so the winds it's not something usually to be concerned of it's more the moms who struggle with a baby who's screaming and this is remember again the three um, the three threes and I'm just going to repeat that for you that you can remember what the definition is so it's a lot of crying for three hours in one day, for three weeks, uh, for three days in one week, and for three we three consecutive weeks. If this happens, you know you're very likely or most likely looking at colic in your baby. Okay, so I hope that gave you a little bit perspective between the two and some tricks as to what to do if that actually comes, um, you know, if, if wind or colic comes knocking on your door. Thank you.